You get Pastor Man on the floor now, but talk about a witch always using children. Mm -hmm. The Pope, you know, does this too. This is so sick, so staged, so evil. Pastor Manning, you're a pastor. You've talked about this great evil we're facing, this Jezebel spirit. We've got a long segment coming up, but the short one, everybody I talk to is on fire. Even people that Biggs knows that haven't been Christians from the military and stuff are saying, I believe in God now that this happened on this anniversary. What is really happening here? You're up there in New York right now. <laughs> Well, it's interesting to find out people are getting religion over the witch, uh, Hillary Clinton, Jezebel. And, and uh, Alex, let me uh, give you uh, a shout out for using, uh, referencing the allegory of the cage by Plato. Uh, something I haven't heard anybody reference other than myself since leaving college. But listen, I think that we need to understand something that we are watching a setup. Uh, I, I don't think the powers that be want to see an election take place. And um, we are watching perhaps the beginning stages of it, or at least the culmination of the stages that began some time ago in Hillary uh, perhaps not being able to meet the election requirements in terms of what will happen in November. Uh, I think we also need, I believe she's sick. In fact, I know that the woman is sick, that she's, she's just mentally uh, incapable and she's physically incapable as well. But I, I think that, in fact, I'm confident that the Trump campaign and, and, and also Hillary's uh, inner circle and her internal polling is demonstrating unequivocally that Trump has won the election where it held last week. And her statement about deplorables last week was as, I think, outrageous as her uh, sickness this past was yesterday at the 9-11 event. And what Hillary has realized and come to understand how polling people are telling her that Trump has won the election. And even though there are some states, according to CNN, ROC, Paul Rasmussen, Quinnipiac, and perhaps some others are stating that Trump does not have some of the battleground states to take him to victory. But I think her polls are telling her that he does. And we may see a, a, an attempt now with this sickness either to stave off the election or we may see an attempt to try to bring sympathetic votes her way. You'll remember when Obama was whipping her behind up there in New Hampshire back in 2008, she sat down in that diner or restaurant or whatever it was and began to weep like a little baby. And she was able to come back from Obama beating her in Iowa. So I think the ultimate that we can look at, there are two things that we can be certain about. She's Number playing one, up for sympathy, and we know the Democrats are meeting right now in D.C. to figure out how to run a scam. Yeah, and 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 then the other thing is, is will we see an election? I mean, Alex, you've written about in your last statement you made about the fact this could be a way to pause the election that we don't have a candidate uh, to run. Uh, we have a candidate who's comatose, so we, you know, I, I think you made a statement, and several other your people, your guests have also referenced that. Ultimately, I think this is what we're looking at. I don't deny that the woman is sick. But I think the sickness can be used by the powers that Oh, be. I agree. They won't let a good crisis go to waste. I mean, they're going to pivot no matter how things change. They're going to go back and forth. When we come back, Pastor Manning of Atla.org, a great church. They're serving the community in Harlem, A-T-L-A-H.org, Pastor James David Manning. When we come back, we'll talk about those different scenarios with our panel here. And I'm going to play the clip since you mentioned the deplorables. Uh, we'll get uh, Donald Trump's latest response to that and a lot more. And we have a compilation video of all of our different health problems straight ahead. But uh, this is an incredible time to be alive. And I agree with Manning. Uh, it's good to see this, you know, the truth come out. But at the same time, they're going to strike back. They're going to pivot. They're going to make a move. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones with Leanne McAdoo and, of course, Joe Biggs. Well, Hillary collapsed in New York City. We're about to play a clip of Donald Trump talking about the deplorables, how half of Trump supporters are evil, bad people, bitter clingers. But I agree with Manning. They're going to try to make a move on this. Hillary is really sick, but it discredits the mainstream media like never before. That's why, overall, this is a big, big victory. Leanne McAdoo, Joe Biggs in the studio with us. Pop in any time. I'm going back to Manning to finish up his comment here. But first, here's Donald Trump on Hillary's statement about the deplorables that's hurting her so bad in the polls. Personally, when I heard it, I thought that it was not something that was within the realm of possible that she would have said it. And I said to my people, I don't believe she said it. I think you have to check it because there's no way that she said this. And she actually did achieve it. 
really doubled up because it was said with such anger and such unbelievable anger. And I think this is the biggest mistake of the political season. Sure. Remember this, you're going to be president. You're president of all the people. You're not president of 50% or 75%. You're president of all the people. You're president of everybody. Mm. Pastor Manning, overall, yeah. I, mean, I mean, do you agree it is a discrediting moment for the mainstream media? I, but I, I, I agree with Trump completely on this. It's perhaps the worst statement throughout this campaign season. And it was not only just an art and artful, it was a it was a deplorable statement. It was, and I think, Alex, it was issued in panic. I think, uh, as I stated earlier, the internal polling is demonstrating that she has lost, and I think the powers that be understand that. And it was a statement made in panic. I think she is a little bit more governed in that, uh, a little bit more circumspect, rather than making a statement such as that. So she threw everything she possibly had. But the other question, Alex, is that, and you know, Trying to put the, together the pieces, I think we all have been able to demonstrate that she is sick uh, and that they're trying to hide it. But the other thing is, is that, you know, it, it did, was she pulled down? Okay, let's say she made a statement um, realizing that the possibility of, uh, is very strong that she has lost the election. And she makes this deplorable statement, which was awful to call Americans as she did. It's one thing to go out to an individual group. Uh, and, and so the powers that be, the New World Order, the globalists, the others, said, let's take her off. Let's take her down. It's time for her to get off the stage and let's try to get somebody else or try to stave off or stall the election. So we can't be sure whether or not the, the, the fact that she is sick, that that sickness was used or whether she was just totally completely sure, out Let me of ask it. you this question. I want you guys to chime in um, with your views. So everything's getting so crazy. Everything they do falls apart. And we see it with foreign leaders in other countries. It seems like the world is melting down and everything the New World Order does is disintegrating. Uh, but still, they just have the power and move forward. What would you call that phenomenon, Pastor Manning? Uh, the fact that they, they have the powers, but there is a spiritual... Listen, America is praying. Whether, they are, whether they are, they're the, we are saints or not is a matter of question. But spiritually, America is looking at, you know, I said uh, today on the Manning Report, uh, uh, Alex, that what Donald Trump does is that he makes America feel young again. Now, I know his slogan is to make America great again. Okay, that's fine. But really, when you listen to him, it makes us feel young again. It makes us feel like we want to pick up our guns and go the wild, wild west uh, <laughs> in a positive way. We want to start another revolution. I mean, he really makes us feel like let's get our guns and go to town. Uh, I, I made the statement earlier today that America, Trump makes America in a positive way feel like we're on fire. Well, Trump's told me, he said, my mission is to raise America's spirit. I don't want to have a yeah, on the field day, but Trump told me that on the phone. He goes... That's well, the spirit of, of what I felt in that RNC was incredible. He goes, well, that's what I want to do is raise America's spirit and give us confidence again. And he's doing it. And he's got the time to do it right now. Look at this. 36 hours after or before Hillary made that deplorable statement, that's when Obama came back from Asia and he had been bashing America mm -hmm. on this entire oh, tour. It was nothing but don't one forget, day after another forget, after another. Don't forget Obama was called an SOB in, in Asia as well. Yes. You know, I mean, they don't forget that the Philippine Duterte called him that. And they walked it back. But yeah, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go right ahead. No, no. I mean, you, I mean, your take on what's happening here, then. But but that's what I'm saying is the fact that we've got Obama, we've got Hillary attacking the American people. Trump is the one positive person that's really lifting it up. The fact that you've got so many people right now that have awakened from this state of like comatose where mm -hmm. they, right. you know, yeah. patriotism has died, it seems like, in so many aspects of america and this guy's coming in and he's he's igniting that again he's getting the people emotional and proud to be an american right. and proud you know, to go out this, and talk about that right all this quiet diplomacy and you know the and the, and the uplifting of islam and you know, we, we as americans we're, we're tired of being pushed around by by muslims we're tired of being pushed around by mexicans we're tired of giving away the company store to nations like china and india and giving away all kinds of nuclear deals to iran and and saying it's, it's diplomacy it is the best way forward we are vigorous and aggressive people that's not in the spirit of america and what trump is saying we don't have to do this to hell with all that 
We are going to stand our ground. If you don't like it, we'll kick your butt. We'll, and, and people say, yay, mm -hmm. oh, that's what I want to do. I want to kick some butt again. I want to be, I want to be American. That, that's what's happening. And, and there's no way what, what Hillary is presenting can overcome that. So what are they going to do? I, you know, how are they going to stop Trump? Trust me now. I think the other thing needs to be clear. And Alex, you know, I've said from the very beginning, I just don't see Obama leaving office. Not now. I mean, I, 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 will he? There's a possibility, yes. Well, they're even talking about it. Mainstream News putting the election off six months a year, and I guess Obama yeah. does stay. Right. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, By the way, I everybody's always said that. I didn't believe it. We are actually have news talking yeah. about that now. Leanne? At uncharted territory with this. And, and just going back to what Pastor Manning was saying, I mean, look at what the president has done to this country and it's not working because he's going to other nations and they're totally disrespecting him. They don't respect him for throwing away America, selling America out to the highest bidder. They don't respect him. And so I think it's true. Trump is coming in and they're certainly not going to respect Hillary Clinton. That's a great oh, question, not. Pastor Manning. And I want to get both your take on this. Why do you think people are disrespecting Obama so much when he grovels to him? Because he's groveling, Pastor Manning? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he's shown, I mean, he, he drew a red line in the sand with Bashar Assad in Syria, right? And and Bashar crossed it before he could finish the, the mark itself. Um, he, it, I think people are, are looking and anybody with half a brain can see that Obama has sold out the American ideal. Mm -hmm. He has sold out the American people. And worst of all, he's trampled on black people. I mean, mm -hmm. in the worst possible way. So people are looking at this. And realizing that what he has done to America, is said, listen, this man is nobody. He, he, and and we're, so we can say what we want to say about him. He hates and America think, and no world leaders out there respect him. Look, no, he, he, went over to the, he went over to the UK and they? he's trying to tell him how to vote for Brexit. And right. that bit him right in the butt because no one out there has respect for him. If you hate your own country, how could any other country have any kind of respect in what you have to say? As far as they're concerned, you're weak and they don't want you to be there. Right. Pastor Manning. <laughs> Yeah. I, I mean, I tried to count it up, but I know you met with Trump over a year ago. I know just in New York, he, he, he met yeah. with a whole bunch of different black churches and black uh, uh, preacher groups. And I saw him at prayer breakfasts and all. I mean, just, it seemed like 20, 30 times. ABC News said a few weeks ago, well, it's the first time he's been to a black church in Detroit because, you know, he's uncomfortable and all this stuff. And I, and I went and looked it up and it seemed like he'd been there 10 times more than Hillary what do you say to that, their attempt to say he hasn't reached out to the black community when Obama doesn't say a word about that? And it seems like Trump's really been reaching out. What's the truth? I, I think that Trump's state statement uh, during the shortly after the convention, I get my timelines mixed up here. Uh, what do you have to lose? Um, you got 58 percent unemployment of your youth. You've got failing schools. You've got poverty. What do you have to lose was an accurate statement, quite frankly. I was praying that he would not walk it back. The media jumped all over him. Anything you say about African-American people, I mean, you, you, they jump all over you. Uh, but he was absolutely right. And he should go back to that statement. What do you have to lose? And that statement confronts the fact that the, every city and every parcel of American government and lifestyle that is run by the Democrats and primarily where black people are in charge is failing, Alex. It, I live here in Harlem. I got to tell you, it is horrible. It's worse now than before Dr. King in the civil rights movement. More men in prison, fewer fathers. 90% of the homes in the black community, Alex, don't have fathers in them. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a, a, a horrible. What do you make of Kaepernick and George Soros and then these football teams taking a knee during 9 11? Regardless of what you think about 9 11, the firefighters and police and those that died don't deserve to be pissed on. I mean, what what, what is all that? Well, I, you know, somebody should kick a Kaepernick's butt. I don't know what's it when he's sitting there. <laughs> I, I think they should should have got a good place kicker that knows how to put, put a real good kick. <laughs> and when he sits down, kick him right in the split. That's what I think <laughs> ought to happen to him now. Come arrest me for that. Somebody come arrest me for saying that. But that's what I think. You ask me what I think, I'll tell you what I think. What do you want me to do? Think about it, though. Think about all the enemies we have right now that are looking at America, watching the news, Seeing America, the, the patriotism kind of collapsing, mm -hmm. the fact that you have all these people who are taking a knee or sitting down. We've had we have schools that are banning the Pledge of Allegiance, praying the fact that you can get, you know, arrested for having an American flag on your property. The fact that I, you can be told that you're being uh, anti-immigration because at a, a high school football game, 
You're waving an American flag, hey, and that could be... Well, look, it's globalism, hey, Alex, and it's not that Alex, America's perfect. It's that the globalists are blaming hey, us for what they've done. Go ahead. Alex, listen, uh, today, yesterday was 9-11, right? Everybody down at, uh, you know, World Trade Center, and, they, and, and a great ceremony, and, they, and everything. And, of course, 9 is another story. But guess what's happening in New York City today, uh, the day after 9-11? All public schools in New York City are closed. 3.4 million children that go to school in New York cannot go to school because it's a Muslim holiday. The mayor of the city of New York City Council, state government, they have orchestrated the day after 9-11. You probably think I'm making this up. I swear it's the absolute truth. The day after 9-11, 9-12 is now a holiday called the El Ad Haddad spiritual holiday for Muslims. Banks are closed. Businesses are closed. Parents can't take their children to school. The food lunch pro school lunch programs are closed down. Businesses are losing money because we've now established a Muslim holiday 15 days, 15 years after. What is the plan making the West? And, and, and Leon, I want your view and we'll get Pastor Manning's on making us adopt the most radical forms of Islam. Well, what's the plan for making us do it? I, 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 the, the thing of it is, is that the it's, Saudi Arabia has a lot of influence over our nation. They have a lot of influence over the well, New World Order. They have a lot of influence presently over Obama, and they want to spread Islam as far as they possibly can. And if they can then, be, if they can co-opt this nation, they can break the spirit of this nation. They can take over financially as well. So it's simply a matter of ruling the kingdom of planet Earth. That's what it is. They want to rule planet Earth, and America is a major obstacle. And I got to tell you that what Trump has done in stirring up the people who want to you know, make make America young again is a threat. And we could see some really very serious activities now happening. Uh, you said it, they want America, despite all its problems, the threat to the globalists, to go to sleep yeah. and never wake up. Right. Yeah. And that's why I thought it was really interesting that they were trying to, uh, Bill Clinton was coming out saying that the Make America Great Again slogan is racist and, and really going to the black community saying, oh, well, he wants to take it back 50 years. And then you, you kind of go back and look at where the black community was. I mean, their families were together. They were on the I rise, go back rising middle class. Take me back. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I mean, go ahead, Pastor Manning. No, I want to go back 50 years. The families were together. We had strong schools. There were fewer than 100,000 men in jail, where that, in prison, where there's now more than 1.2 million. The communities were flourishing mm -hmm. with jobs, with decency. With honor, mm -hmm. to Alex, you know you got you got to live in Harlem, a South Central Los. Listen, uh, listen, listen. Does anybody need anything better than Chicago? You've got nearly five thousand people that have been killed in Chicago. Black men killing each other since Obama's presidency. I mean, think about how horrific that is. That that's going on. Nobody wants to live like that. Right. But that's what. So we could go back to a time where we weren't that that crazy. Sure. Well, here's the bottom line. I want to ask you all each, because I want to have this roundtable today, uh, starting with Biggs and then Leanne and then Pastor Manning. What do you think they're cooking up in these secret DNC meetings that they admit in Politico are going on right now to decide of whether Hillary should step down? I don't know. Like I said, I, I know that she's determined to do what she can. She's going to fight through this illness to try to get that, reach that historic moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I, in my opinion, I know she knows she can't last four years. The question is, is who are they going to usher in after that to take over? And that's why my concern has been since day one, who is this Kane guy and what is it do they want with him? And then if they don't go with him, what other kind of people are they going to choose to bring in? Mm -hmm. Well, and I just want to point out too, how uh, the dehydration and overheating was the same excuse that was given in 2012, when Hillary Clinton first fainted and got her concussion, they said she fainted because she was dehydrated and overheated. So obviously, this is an ongoing medical condition that she fainted. She has epilepsy. Classes. Yeah, I mean, it's not just this pneumonia that all of a sudden her staff has been having for several months, which the the, the political uh, the press pool had never heard of prior to this. Well, you catch pneumonia when you already have a weakened immune system. Exactly. Like when I had the flu, I got pneumonia when I had the flu. You don't just go out and get but it. But I'm telling you, they're making she's got a new, She's got a number of things wrong with her. Do I believe that she could have pneumonia? Yeah, it's a possibility. But that's caused, that's that's due to the fact that she has been sick for a long period of time. Her immune system She's is clearly weak. having uh, seizures. Yes. I mean, you she can loses. see her have them and then fall out. She loses control of her muscles. Alex, 
Listen, if if Hillary has whitewashed, bleached, bit 15,000 emails, and God only knows how many others that we will never know the content of or how they were served, we have to ultimately begin to ask the question, how much information has been bleached, bit about that Muslim Barack Hussein Obama? And whoever goes into the presidency will have the power even to, to preserve and protect the 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 integrity of the, the criminality of Obama's illegal election, or will have the ability to open it up and make it plain so everybody can see that our nation for eight years was under siege. And so, I whether or not Hillary it will be allowed to do that, uh, and if she's not allowed to do that, if she's not given the privilege to be able to do that, uh, we we very possibly when I have an election. I think all of us know that it's a, it's a horrific thing that Hillary, what the emails, what Hillary has done with emails in her private server. But what the media has not discussed and is definitely afraid to discuss, but is as obvious, it's the elephant in the room, is what has been covered up about Obama. I agree. And, and so that, let me ask you this question as we got a break. And then I'm going to keep you guys a little bit in the next hour. And then I've got a bunch of the news I'm going to cover. We have this compilation of all our different illnesses, video and audio we're going to play for TV and radio listeners as well. You're listening to the Alex Jones Show. As we go to break, I asked a question earlier, but I got caught, you know, in all the crosstalk here of myself and others. Why do you think all hell's breaking loose worldwide right now? Oh, yeah, that is a question. Uh, if, you're, if you're focusing it on me, uh, again, it's because of the, the spirituality of our nation, because if our nation can finally be conquered, if the spirit of our nation can be broken, then there is no longer any further opposition. China, That's Russia, right. Russia. The globalists get the world once America falls. And as bad as we are, yeah. though, there's still something about it they've got to take down. That's right. No, you're right. But that's it. That's the answer. For me, that's the answer. I think that's the answer. All right. Well, I'm going to come back and uh, talk to Pastor Manning. Uh, you guys are uh, hang around if you want, but I want to come back and get your take in the next hour for about 20 minutes at least on all these other developments, these other news articles we haven't gotten to, all these other clips. Trump responding. There's so much coming up in the third and fourth hour today. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. All right, it's our final segment, and then our other reporters are going to come back in for about 15, 20 minutes. I've got a bunch of clips, a bunch of angles I haven't covered of this. And we will continue on and also open the phones up and take your phone calls into the fourth hour today that David Knight is hosting. Quite frankly, this has gotten even above my pay grade. I feel like I'm in way over my head, but so is everybody else. These globalists that think they're invincible, that think they're unstoppable, they're being humbled right now. And history shows that happens again and again. They're very smart. They're very deceptive. They have the media on their side, but more and more that media is discredited. So I just have a feeling deep down, Pastor Manning of Atla Worldwide Church, uh, based there in New York City and Harlem, that overall their power is waning, even as they build their world government, uh, but that they're going to strike back in some really nasty ways. Other key points you'd like to add, sir? A couple of things. One, Alex, is that uh, since I've been coming on your, your broadcast, and thank you so very much. I mean, you're quite generous. I can never thank you enough. We have been getting members of people coming to our church, our worship services in pretty large numbers. I heard you on Alex Jones. I come to see what's up. Uh, so thank you so very much for that. But the other thing is, is and we're talking about some really substantial people, Alex. I mean, I, I got to have them on my broadcast. and They're coming out of New York City. But my, I only have one tech here today. His wife has an appointment, a uh, sonogram, she's pregnant. He has to leave at two o'clock. Lord knows I hate to have to say this, but I, would have, I don't have anybody to detect me after he goes. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay past two o'clock. Uh, no, I know you got to leave in the next five minutes. So I've got my crew coming in, but just, uh, just in closing, what are other key points you'd like to make? Uh, that the uh, America will, listen, God, this, this nation was established and founded on the word of God, whether people want to talk about the, the founding fathers being deists or whatever it is, we know that God has blessed this nation and it will not go down in, uh, in ashes with the new world order who wants to take this this nation away from God and away from the away from the people. So the this is the battleground. It's not in Europe. It's not in Asia. The battleground of good and evil is here in America. And while we may look like we are outnumbered by the globalists and by their financial wherewithal and power, we are not. And 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 that's why we see all of what's going on 
in terms of our economy, our political, uh, the, if you will, presentation globally. But America will stand. It's going to be a terrible battle. We have to get ready also for a very, very difficult time in October and in November if Hillary is not going to be able to stand and be able to either debate Trump or to be able to close the election and, and be able to say she can oh, run. Oh, there's no way she can stand up for an hour or two and debate him. What's she going to do? Well, it, it, so we, uh, so what's the global, what are, what are the Democrats doing now? You said they're planning. You're right. What are they planning on? What are the globalists planning on doing? And what are the people planning on doing? We need a strategy to combat what they're going to come back with. And I, I, I think basically what they want to do is, is try to use martial law or e the states of emergencies in various states. To we stop know there's the a gear up for it, we've, the likes of which we've never seen before. Pastor Manning, thank you so much. Looking forward to speaking to you in a few weeks again. Thank you, sir. Alex, thank you for having me. Thank you for all these people that's coming to our church now as a result of my being on your broadcast. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Yep, that's right. Otlo Worldwide Church. Give me that website, folks. It's otlo.org. He's a great guy. I always love having him on. Appreciate him being part of our roundtable. And I think he misunderstood. I think he thought I wanted him on the next hour. The crew's coming back in, but he's got to go. I know he had to go. Now, um,